Hello once again from the Prim Reaper. I've been working on several projects all at once, but one thing that I thought that you might be interested in was my first negative experience with feminism that I can recall. This happened years ago, early in my bachelor's degree for psychology. I needed to take a couple of filler classes, and for most of these I chose criminal justice or philosophy, but one course that I chose was an introductory sociology class. I know, I know, but back then I didn't really know what those kinds of classes entailed, and from the syllabus alone it, I thought it might be something interesting that pertained to the rest of my degree as well. So. As you might expect, it was in this first class that I encountered my first real-world issue with feminism. Now, it's been a few years, so some of the details are a little bit fuzzy to me, but as I recall, one of the assignments involved writing a paper discussing the notion that women are considered the other in a lot of research that's performed. That is, men are considered the default category, and women are considered secondary. When I read this, I was confused. I figured, if there are only two categories being studied, men and women, it wouldn't really make sense to consider either a default. One category would necessarily come first, just by nature of how communication works, and this wouldn't necessarily imply that the one category was superior or predominant over the other. If this were the case, then we could easily make the same argument if a study discussed a female category before a male category and it would just kind of devolve into a grade school, I want to go first argument. <laughs> to me, it just felt like a silly thing to argue. So when I wrote the paper, I set about arguing against the main point. Mistake. In all my other papers in the course, non-feminist topics, of course, I'd received low 90s, high 80s. When this paper came back, 72%. I was, as you can imagine, pissed especially when a lot of the feedback she'd given me was talking about debunked issues like the wage gap or was making claims like sexism against women is somehow more serious than sexism against men. I wish I still had the original essay with the feedback included. I tried to go back and get that for this video, but unfortunately the class has been rebranded and so the original course link with my submitted assignments is no longer available to me. However, I did manage to find the email that I sent to her challenging a lot of her comments, so I thought that I would give you the paraphrased version here, because a lot of the fine details won't make sense without the original essay. Um, also, I linked several of my sources with all the claims that I won't bother to try and read out loud, and there are several things that I missed back then as well, but hey, it was early in my feminist challenging career, so here we go. I wanted to make a few responses to your replies to the essay. First of all, you state that women make only about 70% of what men earn, and this may be true in some areas of the world or in the past, but in the US, for example, women are actually earning more than men a lot of the time, so I figured that this was not something worth mentioning. Secondly, you mention how many facts about women are obtained from studying male participants, and this is true, but the specific article that we were given to read for this assignment mentioned both male and female researchers and participants, so this is what I went off of. You also mention how many of our policies were based off of such research, and I agree, but my point was that the comparison of women to men in modern research is less significant a factor in this than previous scientific research that held greater gender biases, such as a difference in the numbers of male and female participants. Sorry that that sentence was a little confusing. I was clearly upset when I wrote this. What I meant to say there was just that while sex biases were likely much more common in older research, more modern researchers are much more conscious of these kinds of biases and actively work against them, and therefore policies based on modern research will also be cognizant of and work against these biases as well. Getting back to the email. Next, you asked me to describe how men being compared to women, as opposed to the other way around, would be sexist towards men. But I figured that this was obvious. If comparing women to men is sexist towards women, like you claim in the assignment description, shouldn't it go without saying that comparing men to women would be sexist towards men? Sexism is a two-way street. If one gender is being favored over the other, then sexism is present. 
It does not matter, in my opinion, that sexism against women has existed for a long time. That does not make sexism against men okay now. The last point that I'm going to mention is your response to my assertion that men and women are clearly different. While it is true that men and women have been historically treated differently based on this fact, I feel that great strides have been made to equalize the sexes, nearly to the point of irrelevance in North American society when it comes to critical aspects such as job opportunities and pay, and to deny this or to downplay it is an oversimplification in my opinion. To clarify here, the comment about comparing men to women and vice versa relates to the notion that it is sexist to compare women to men in a study as if men were the main category and women are simply an afterthought. This was where I stated in the essay that it's silly to act like merely discussing women after men means they're less important, because if that were supposedly sexism, then it would be equally sexist towards men if we turned it around and put women first. I wasn't actually trying to state that either was sexist, it was simply an example meant to illustrate the absurdity of such a claim. I then go on to ask her to reconsider the grade that she gave me because I felt like a lot of the reasons she gave me for docking points were faulty. I'm happy to report that she did wind up raising the grade from a 72% to an 80%. Still lower than most of my other papers, but I still considered it a success. She said, it looks like you've researched this more than I thought based on the essay. In my mind, it was like, no, I just didn't think that I needed to argue against dubious facts or bias against one sex or the other. Consider me informed. So yeah, I consider this my first personal negative experience with feminism, and is probably the catalyst for why I began looking into it more and seeing more and more things that I disagreed with. I just thought that you guys might be interested in what got me to where I am today. I have another video planned out already, so hopefully I should have that out early next week. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.